one in real life. Welcome to home. You are safe. Welcome to healing. To life, to love, to Marwin. Welcome to Marwin. You know, there's so many films coming out right now, back to back to back, that have to do with the system of white supremacy. I mean, it's kind of like it's real and affects everybody on the planet, even in this film. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Welcome to Marwin. I really do appreciate it. This is a film that I was really looking forward to. I'm a big fan of Steve Carell. I think he's a great actor. Um, he can act and he can also make me laugh. Of course, he popped up on the scene for me. I think mostly everybody in 40 year old version, which came out many, many years ago. This film is written and directed by Robert Zemeckis. If you don't know his work, he did one of my favorite films that came out in 1994. I don't think it should have won Best Picture, but it was Forrest Gump. I, I think that Shawshank Redemption should have won that year. Uh, he also did Flight with Denzel Washington, which I think came out in 2012. Great film. Cast Away and also Beowulf. And what this film is about is um, there's a this real true story of a man by the name of Mark Hogenkamp. And it was April 8th. 2000 so that is 18 years ago i had to think about it real quick uh he was brutally attacked um by some white supremacist nazis um he was at a bar walked out well they had you know a confrontation and they beat the crap out of him they beat the hell out of him nearly killed him left him there for dead they literally beat the memories out of his head so he could not re he can't remember anything from per you know from his previous life before the beating he can't remember if he was married he can't remember what job he had who his family was nothing it's like a completely blank slate i'm like man damn that is just like so messed up so what this film is about is how you know he goes about just trying to go through life and make it and just be another outstanding citizen and so of course the performance by steve carell was phenomenal i loved him he was very convincing you know he really did dedicate himself into the role to where you uh where he wanted Wanted you to see exactly what Mr. Mark Hokenkamp had to go through. The next great thing about this film uh, was the uh, the effects that they had with the dolls, because what he does was he was attacked by, like I said, white supremacist Nazis. And so what he did was he built a fictional town by the name of Marwin. And there is significance to that name. It's not random. You have to see the film yourself to determine why. But uh, he makes up a lot of um, wor not, uh, World War II scenarios because they had to do with the Nazis. And so that's just kind of ha ha has his therapeutic way of just dealing with the trauma and all that good stuff. And the way that they use the little action figures and the dolls and the way they make that come to life, it was something that I've never seen before. It was great. It really stood out. They put a lot of hard work and detail into this. Uh, um, each of the dolls looked exactly like the real life counterparts, the actors. I mean, you have Steve Carell in this thing. Uh, we also have uh, Janelle uh, Monet, who is an actress and also, uh, I think, a singer, songwriter or artist. Um, I, I, I mean, she is. I don't know why I said I think, but, you know, she is. She was also in um, uh, Hidden Figures with with um, Taraji P. Henson and, oh, my goodness, um Forgive me, guys. I can't remember her name. But we have Leslie Mann in this film as well as Nicole. She did a great job. We also have a bunch of other people that were great, but I don't know their names. And I don't think they're that popular. I don't want to just list them off right here. They were great. All of them looked exactly like their dolls. The way they made these dolls come to life was just, it was, it was super clean. It was dope. I loved it. The transition between the dolls going over to the real life was seamless. I'm like, man, how the hell did y'all do that? Technology is just getting better and better and better. And I liked that. And it, it was intense. And, you know, some of it was just seemed like, you know, it was like a new age toy story, but in live action, not just computer, computer animation. And the way they did it was like motion capture. You know what I'm saying? It, it was just very convincing. The bad thing about it is the balance of the film. They did not. Robert Zemeckis did a horrible job of balancing uh, the real life story with how much he wanted to tell through the dolls. Now, the transition between the two, like I just said, was seamless. But sometimes he spent too much time on the dolls. Sometimes he used the dolls to illustrate the story. They had nothing 
nothing to do with the story. It just was a bunch of dolls running around. And I'm like, okay, I mean, it looks great, but what does this have to do with Steve Carell with Mr. Hogan Camp? It's just a bunch of dolls playing doll time. Now, there are other, there were other points in the film to where, you know, it did have to do with the story. We would go from the way, uh, Hogan Camp perceived the world in real live action and then he would use the dolls to represent that. And that was great. That was fine. But there was at least a good three or four times to where you just like, man, what the hell does it have to do with anything? Nothing at all. And so, but at the same time, the story of like the way the story is told, it's not told in a linear fashion, like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, or going left like this. I'm sorry, it's inverse. Um, you know, it's, it's like a puzzle and they, they may tell part seven first and then part three, then start at part one, then go all the way to the end, then come back. And then the way they did that, that was great. It really did keep you intrigued, but it was spotty because this film goes like this throughout the whole time. Like you're interested and then you're bored out of your mind. You're interested and you're bored out of your mind. You, I mean, seriously, every 10 minutes I was excited. I was intrigued. I wanted to know what happened and, you know, just, I wanted to know everything. Other moments I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm ready to go. Like, this is just, I, I'm, I'm tired. I, I want to go home. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's very unfortunate because Steve Carell's performance is great. And then the effects from the dolls was great too, but the storytelling was trash. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it just was kind of like all over the place. I was disappointed and I went in with uh meteor mediocre expectations because my girl, Sharonda Williams would pay a weight, pay a weight.com, pay a weight YouTube channel. What's up? My girl, what's up? My sister, y'all go check her out. She's funny. She's a very nice person. She saw this before I did. Uh, via her Instagram. I don't think she posted a review yet. And I was tired. I was like, man, should I go see this? And, you know, she gave me her two cents. She was like, nah, well, I don't, well, she gave me her two cents. So I don't, man, she may get mad at me for saying that. Anyway, I went in with low expectations and I was still disappointed. If I have to rate Welcome to Marwin out of a one out of 10, I'm going to give it a five out of 10. I was going to say 5.5, 5, but I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. Yes, a 5 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion for Welcome to Marwin. What did you think? Do you want to see it? Have you seen it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all that good stuff. It's right there at the bottom of your screen, and you can also, um, <laughs> I forgot, I forgot my outro. It's right there at the bottom of your screen, and, uh, <laughs> hello, how does this go? Uh, you, <laughs> thumbs up, it's right there at the bottom of your screen. I don't remember what I, I don't, I, I, I don't forgot. I don't, I just didn't like this movie that much. But anyway, guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Welcome to Marwin. And before you go, uh, don't forget uh, that my name is Brenda Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. <laughs> Peace.